hello my name is lade and welcome to my channel hooked by lade in this video i'm going to be showing you how to crochet this beautiful headband i'm going to come close and so you can take a look as you can see right here and no worries this tutorial is going to be beginner friendly so if you have no idea on how to crochet just come with your yarn your hook your coffee and let's get started so as you can see this band has a beautiful wrap to it and it's really you know easy you only use one style of stitch and i know you probably have been waiting to make a bag let's 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 be calm let's wait because stitches as simple as this practice like this will make your hand more flexible in handling much bigger yarns like the t-shirt yarn so let's get started and I made use of this beautiful unbranded yarn but in order to get this thickness because the yarn is quite you know the, the thickness is not as sturdy as I want it to be I had to double it that's making it two ply and what that means is I look for the tail that you dig into your yarn and then I look for um, the beginning so in order to crochet and get the thickness I want I double the yarn now if you already have a yarn that is thick enough to make your headband sure you can go ahead but i was very sure the moment i saw this yarn it has to be from experience that i would not get the thickness i want so i had to double it and i also wanted to have this beautiful bust of colors um, that's how you see this gradient you don't know where the yarn is coming from you don't know where this color started and all so i just got it by simply doubling this yarn for the hook you need, like I always say, I know the hook to use from experience, but if you have a yarn that is branded, you can check um, the recommended hook size on your yarn. For this project, to achieve this look, I'm going to be using a 5mm crochet hook, which we will take from our hook set, right here, a 5mm crochet hook. And you also need a tape rule. The reason why you need a tape rule is this. Uh, I don't want us to start by giving you a specific number of rules you have to use because you might be making this headband for a child. You might be making it for yourself. And for people like me that like to wear braids, I like big hairstyles, I, I would like to have mine bigger. I'm going to go as slow as I can. So as a complete beginner, you're going to catch the entire process. In projects like this, the first thing we do is to tie a slip knot. If you don't know how to tie a slip knot or how to chain, I sincerely recommend that you go through my video on how to crochet as a complete beginner, episode 1. It's going to be linked in the description below. Upon tying a slip knot, we are going to chain 15. The reason why we are chaining 15 is to get this width. And why do I have this width? It's because I'm comfortable with it, because I like the way it holds my hair my hair up if you do not want your project to be this wide you can chain 13 that's to take out say three um, rows if you want it to be wider you can chain 17 to be honest i'm not a fan of um, giving you a template to work or to use this particular chain by force no you have to know what you are working with know the width you want and then you're going to get it so for mine i'm going to chain 15 because i'm satisfied with this one so let's chain 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Here yeah, we have chained fifteen. So the next thing we are going to be doing is working single crochet. We'll call it a um, single crochet on every stitch to get to the end of um, the rows now let's start in order to begin single crochet you are not going to do a single crochet in this first v that you are seeing here you are going to do a single crochet in the next v that's because this v connects the last chain so we're going to start by doing a single crochet here you put your insert your hook again you insert your hook here and you bring it out like so 
then you put your yarn over your hook and you bring everything out congratulations you've done your first single crochet i'm going to go again and i'm going to go slowly this time you see this v in the middle of your that looks like v on your chain you are going to insert your hook into the first half and bring out your yarn again your tension is important how to hold your yarn is important personally i prefer to use this two fingers to steady my yarn and use my two hands to hold the chain down so you have to find a way that works for you you bring out your yarn here and you also have to be careful so you don't uh, bring out the wrong side bring out your yarn here then you wrap your yarn over your hook and bring everything out so that's how to do a single crochet we're going to go a couple more times in fact we're going to go all the way so we can see how the single crochet is being done bring out your yarn and then bring it all the way out you go into this V you bring out your yarn then you bring it all the way out into this V you bring out your yarn and then you bring it all the way out into this V bring out your yarn like this bring out your yarn all the way out like so and please in case your project doesn't really look like mine yet don't be discouraged don't be tired then we have a again you go into this V and bring everything out like so like this like this and the last one is really important to catch it because it's very easy to um, ignore it so the last one just before the slip knot we are going to have the last single crochet like this so now we're going to we're supposed to have how many stitches 14 because we skipped the first one to make it a turning chain don't worry you'll be more familiar with these terms as we go but let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fourteen so let me get this out of the way so we can you know focus much better on our project to go to the next row we are going to start by chaining one to go to the next row of this project and what do i mean by chaining one again i have my hand holding the yarn this is my own way of you know adjusting the tension then i insert my hook like so and bring it out and we've done two rows of single crochet now we're going to go to the next row by doing what chaining one that will put the yarn over here and bring it out that's chaining one that will turn our project over again i'm going to try and zoom in i don't start on the first uh single crochet row here i go straight to the next one so what do i do i go into the next stitch bring out the yarn put the yarn over my hook and bring it all out so i've done the first single crochet for the third row so I'm going to continue like this and I sincerely hope you have the patience to practice this in case your project doesn't look like this. Trust me as a beginner, this is meant to happen. It's not supposed to come, you know, like magic. It comes with practice. So when you see a little girl crocheting or a little boy crocheting, you respect them <laughs> because you know this craft, man, it's not easy. So I'm, I want to show you the last one here because very soon I'm going to be treating us like a pro and meet us at the end of our project. And the last one here is also important because you have the temptation to skip this one, but please don't yield into it. There's this row here for you to work on. So you have to dig in your yarn, bring it out, 
then you do the last thing crochet and as usual we chain one and turn our project again you don't work on this first stitch you work on this second one to do our first thing crochet for the fourth row now for the number of rows we are going to do on this project i had about 60 rows right but like I always say, you don't have to be rigid. You don't have to use a template to crochet. It makes more sense when you know the reason why you are, go, you are, you are going as far, maybe 60 rows, 70 rows, than me just giving you 60 rows. So when you try on your project and doesn't fit you, you feel like you've made a huge mess. What I always do is this. I go to my hook set. I bring out my tape room, as a crafter would do. Then I measured my hair. Now, depending on what you want to do, uh, I think I use roughly, let's say, 20 inches to measure. That's, I put the tape roof around my head. So, depending on what you want to do, depending on what you want to do. So, you'd have this, instead of blindly using 60 rows because I use 60 rows, trust me, it might not fit your head. And if you are doing it for a little girl, it might be too big. It's because most of the times, I make a lot of um, big braids. I'm a fan of braids. I braid a lot. So I prefer to have a bigger band. But this project, this one, I'm going to make it smaller for cases where maybe I'm losing my hair and I don't want to have it too loose around me. So instead of doing 60 here, I'm going to do 55 rows. Again, I hope you know the reasons why I'm doing 55 rows here. Don't follow me blindly. Bring out your tape rule measure your head so you know the number of rows you are going to go that means you are going to keep working on your project and keep measuring once you get to the inches that wraps your head perfectly you stop so on this project i'm going to go uh 55 rows and we're still on the first row but i think this project shouldn't take more than an hour if i'm not mistaken we're in celebrative period yeah it's new year day if you can hear a banger sound in the background uh, it's not going short <laughs> my people are celebrating so i'm going to take you through this last um this fourth row again this last one please don't be tempted to do it again that's not going short <laughs> it's banger then we'll uh chain one turn our walk around Keep this first one go to the next one and work on your single crochet so we can see this project is gradually taking shape now i'm going to let you work like a pro that you are i'm going to go 55 rows you please take your tape rule measure your head and work as high as you know as wide as you want your project to be and meet me once i get to 55 row so that we can complete this beautiful project so now that you have done the required number of rows and i ended up going for as high as 63 rows because i had to retake my measurement and for um guidance i'm going to measure what i have here and this is 18 inches so i have 18 inches um i have 18 inches length of double crochet right here so the next thing we want to do is getting this infinity like um, shape right here and how we are going to go about it is very very simple once you are done with your uh, single crochet rows the first thing you are going to do is cut off uh, the yarn so you are going to pick your pair of scissors you are snipping off the yarn and you are going to pull off pull out the thread this way so this way nobody can mess with your project not even you your project is secured now before we have this infinity shape i'm going to show us briefly how to neatly tuck in your project once you are done so to tuck in this end and this end and not have messy projects we are going to go to our hook set and take our paper needle like i said everything is right here so i'm going to need a tapestry needle 
this will do right here so once we have our needle we are going to this is too long I snip some off so we are going to have the yarn here now the point of doing this is to sew this in randomly there is no order to um, how you can have it sewn in to sew this in randomly and neatly at that so you don't have rough looking project so you are going to this is called sewing in your ends and it's necessary to do this for every project so you are going to sew in the end of both projects that's for this one i'm going to do this one with you so you can see how mine looks once i'm done sewing in the ends let's say we are good right here you can comfortably snip off your yarn and as you can see here you don't know where i started from so i'm going to do the same thing with this so once we have the ends neatly sewn in we are going to have our yarn like this you know like the prayer pose oh i don't know what to call this pose and have it into each other like so again we are going to um, take the two ends of your project fold it and have them into each other more like interwoven now to give a fluffier feel you can leave um, some space maybe just two stitches here and here but the, at the end of the day the aim is to have all the sides sewn together so you are going to pick your thread and have it in your tapestry needle you just cut a bit of thread and then you begin to sew so let's begin to sew like we have it right here so make sure you catch every end make sure you catch every end so i'm going to start sewing this way I'm going to start sewing this way and I hope you have your tapestry needle I hope you have everything you need there are also ways you can get this done without the tapestry needle just your hook but um, for neat projects and especially because we are beginners it's important to learn it the best way so we are going to sew in the we are going to sew in both sides Just take your time to make sure your project is beautiful and neat. Just take your time. Yeah, we're almost there. Make sure you get every part, please. This, this is quite important. I have my thread out, but I'm going to fix it in. So, then we have this. And I think this is the final one. Make sure you get every point. And finally, we have this. So, as you can see, we have both ends firmly sewn together so you can cut off the end of your thread and before we sew in the um, two ends before we weave in our ends I'll just like to show you what we have here can you see the beautiful um, the beautiful shape we already have so this like I said this blue is going to be a smaller version of this red because I want a tighter headband for myself in case I'm wearing uh, hair, a hairstyle that is not too big, like braids. So I'm going to sew in this end and you're going to see me at the end of this video. Now that you have completed your first headband project, that means something you can actually wear out and tell people, yes, I made that. 
from the scratch with my hands and a hook. I am really, really proud of you. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for pulling through and learning how to project with me. Please remember to subscribe to my channel so you can be the first to know when next I drop a video. That means you have to turn on your post notifications. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.